I have got some ghost stories for you. I come home from the gym and the chairs are all stacked upside down. I'm like a very intricate stack. There was a werewolf on our porch swing holding one of our kittens. The pen was all busted open and there is blood everywhere. There's like somebody standing in the middle of the bed with their finger pushing straight up on the canopy, like a tent pole. But there's nothing there. And I laid in bed like a little kid. I pulled the covers up over my eyes. <laughs> this little boy told paranormal investigators, apparently my grandfather came back from the dead to harass a toddler. <laughs> so that is my ghost story. Hi, and welcome to Haunted AF, the podcast of real ghost stories told by real people. We are your hosts. I'm Julie Fist. And I'm Rebecca Black. So coming up, we have some amazing disembodied voice stories. Those are some of my favorites. (laughs) Uh, We also have a UFO story out of Dallas. And let me be clear. This is UFO as like truly unidentified flying flying object. I'm not talking aliens. I'm saying there's just something. something, Thank you. In the sky. And we're going to talk about it. First though, we have to send out big love to our friend Des Hernandez, who is in the hospital. What happened? I Uh, saw that on Twitter. Yeah. He's having some lung issues and uh, he might be in the hospital. He might be in rehab for a while. And he said that he's catching up on his podcast, including us. And so we had to Send out big love to Des. Des's father was our very first yes. voice memo story that ever came in. And I've been looking for it. I can't find it. I can't Aww. find which episode it's in. And I went back through a couple of old episodes and I just have to apologize for the shit quality we had. <laughs> Our audio was so bad okay, in the beginning. I, that was so long ago, though. It was, but it's so funny. When I go back and look and you're at just them, like, ah. I know when I try to listen. I, and thank you to those of you who have actually stayed with us this whole time. God bless you. So was it just first, the first season that's so terrible? Uh, I think so. I don't know. I haven't gone back and listened to the second season in a while. So it was just those first handful yeah. of episodes that were just like the, the audio was like all over the place. So you, I'm like, you heard it here first. Skip to season two, everybody. Yeah, I know, but, <laughs> but that's so bad. There's great stories in I season know, one. I know, that's the problem. But you and I are screaming our heads are. off. All right, we got to thank our new patrons, Jill Kerrigan and Rachel. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. Remember, we are posting Patreon pregames every single week, and we also post mini shows that's between seasons that's important because we're about to be ending wrapping up a season what are we in season seven this is season seven yeah ah, how has it been season seven already I don't know. uh our finale gonna be on april 28th so we will be posting mini sods in between our time off or whatever so mm-hmm. you need to subscribe at patreon.com slash haunted af and if you if you're just like really missing us you know you can also listen to the movie minute at julie says so oh yeah because we are posting movie reviews okay let's jump right in this story comes from emma hello julie and rebecca um i'm emma from colorado i've sent you a story before and this one is actually uh something that happened recently in my home i'm gonna sound like one of those crazy people by the way as i keep telling the story so just no judgments i'm hoping this is a safe space for it all uh, strange things. Anyway, I'm a new mom. Um, my little one is just under six months old. And a couple of months ago, I was on haunted TikTok as you usually are. And mm-hmm. it filters sometimes into spiritual TikTok. And I was listening to some videos about ancestors and spirit guides and all kinds of things. And I, for funsies, because this is what you do when your child is napping, decided to try one of their suggestions to see if there were any spirit guides or ancestors around. And then later when I was putting my little one to sleep, I usually give him a pacifier. And at the time I was putting a shirt over him because he didn't like to be put down. So I would put this shirt over him that smelled like me to keep him sleeping. A couple of hours later, he wakes up. I go in there. Pacifier is nowhere to be found. I'm searching. I'm thinking that I'm crazy and I must not have laid him down with one. Anyway, put the shirt back on and later find out uh, as I'm reaching into a pocket that I didn't realize existed, the pacifier is in that pocket. There's no way my three, four month old could have put that in there. His hands barely worked. And I have no idea to this day how it got there. My friend thinks that it was a little nod, like somebody was playing a joke on me. But somehow it ended up buried deep in a pocket and a shirt that I didn't even know existed. I don't know if I'm more disturbed by the fact that they were messing with a sleeping child or that whatever I did on haunted TikTok worked. Anyway, 
that's my story. Thanks so much for making our days better. Thank you, Emma. I'm upset for her. You never wake a sleeping baby. Yeah. How dare you take a pacifier out of its mouth? <laughs> like, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> like, every mom ever is like, no. no. Yeah. And then to hide the passy. Right? That's not cool no. at all. Yeah. I did ask Emma, like, what was it that you were doing? What was this, like, you know, right. calling to you. She sounds like you meditate mm. and you think of people and you kind of open the door, which sounds kind of dangerous. I, I don't, I don't want to play that game. Yeah. That sounds like just a different version of the Ouija board. <laughs> it kind like of you're does. literally calling, I don't care if you call them ancestors or whatever, but I don't want to call anybody if I don't have to. Right. It's kind of, they always say that about the Ouija board. You open the door, yes. you don't know who's going to be right. there. It could be somebody posing as an ancestor. Well, at least they were only messing with the passy as far as we know. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay. So then we got this one from Lydia about a mimic. She says, we have a presence that we've named Kyle because mm -hmm. something about him feels young. Is Kyle a young name? I think so. Okay. Uh, we assume he's a teenager. He mostly yells everyone's name in my voice. He moves things too and likes to open the cupboards. He did it once at 1 a.m. when I was up all alone. It really freaked me out. One time he slammed my bedroom door and there was an extremely loud bang outside in the hall. There was nothing there, but it made the whole house shake. He likes to call people while they're in the shower, too. My husband didn't have any interactions with Kyle until recently. He was in the shower but said that I kept screaming for him. Mm -hmm. He said it was so loud that he got out of the shower to find me, and, of course, he was all alone. Kyle taps a lot, too. All over the house, we hear the tapping. We had a family member from out of town stay with us, but she left after one night, said something kept running around her bedroom when she was trying to sleep. <laughs> Other family members have heard the voice when they stay with us, too. Friends have told us all kinds of things to get rid of a ghost, but I can't explain it. Kyle just seems innocent. And that's from Lydia. Okay. Is Kyle like tapping like tink, tink, tink? Like, or is he like jazz tap dancer type? Because <laughs> I literally got uber like awesome flamboyant vibes of tap dancing of, like, all jazz throughout hands. the house. And I was like, yeah, this place sounds like a party. Now that sounds fantastic, <laughs> but it would be really annoying at three o'clock in the morning. Sure. Probably cute for like the first week. And then yeah. after that, you're like, oh God, Kyle, stop tapping. <laughs> <laughs> We've had enough. You got the part. <laughs> uh, our next story comes from Sarah, and she says, so I have a few stories that involve my grandfather. The first encounter I can clearly recall was when I was about eight years old. I was in the kitchen eating my Eggos one morning, and it was foggy outside. Side note, why does Eggos, why does that always sound good? Because uh, Eggos are delicious. They, they are, but it's like, as soon as you hear Eggos, yeah, it's like, like it's I want one. Way too much butter and syrup. Okay, sorry, keep syrup going. Syrup in every little nook and, and cranny. Little, oh my little God. squares. Yes, yes. perfection. Mm. Uh, I kept looking at this one tree in the backyard because it felt like I could see someone standing by it, and they were looking at me. I didn't recognize them and it was opaque, like not a fully formed apparition. Mm. I don't know why, but I wasn't freaked out. I just finished eating and I went to tell my mom there was a see-through person standing in the backyard. <laughs> like it's no big deal. My mom, of course, was freaked out and checked the backyard, but didn't see anyone. Then she told me it was the anniversary of her father's passing and that maybe it was him in the backyard. Oh, wow. I barely remember my grandfather because he passed away when I was little, but I was able to see him for years after that. I caught glimpses of him throughout our house, usually walking into my parents' room or hanging out in the hallway by my room. Sometimes he would be outside again, which I don't fully understand. Maybe ghosts can enjoy the outdoors too. LOL. 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 Laughing. Laughing. What? God, dumb. The activity increased when my grandmother, who had been his wife, moved into our house. I had. Sorry. I, no, you're I, fine. No, JoJo just jumped up here and she's like freaking us out. Sorry. Oh, I, she's going to try to step on something and ruin everything. I'm like, okay. okay, well, you guard the things. <laughs> I am. Okay. Uh, where did it, let me start. Uh, the activity increased when my grandmother, who had been his wife, moved into our house. I'd see my grandfather. <laughs> Now that is more distracting. Oh, but she's so oh, cute. Look at that belly. Hi, Jojo. You're so cute, but you poop on stuff. You poop everywhere. I'm a pooper. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. No, well, I'm going to go back. Okay. Okay. The activity, look, I had this in front of my face. Yeah, the activity increased. <laughs> uh, the activity increased when my grandmother, who had been his wife, moved into our house. I'd see my grandfather standing near her little living room area as if he were guarding it. One of the last times I saw him in the house was the last Christmas day that grandma was still alive. 
He was standing in the doorway of her bedroom. Grandma had mentioned that she was having dreams where he would sit on the edge of her bed and tell her it was time to go. Oh, wow. Grandma passed away in her sleep a few months later, and I strongly believe my grandfather was waiting right there to greet her. He doesn't seem to hang around anymore, probably off doing fun afterlife stuff with her. Oh, but I think he still likes to check in on my mom from time to time. Thank you, Sarah. Well, isn't that the sweetest? It is, but then you also have to wonder, like, maybe would grandma have lived longer if he wasn't there? Like, come on, it's time to go. <laughs> it's time to go, woman. I mean, wouldn't you be impatient too? Yeah, that's if y'all true. been married all these years, like, hurry up. Yeah, <laughs> gotta stand in the damn foggy backyard watching people eat waffles. <laughs> Uh, real quick update on Lupita's voice from last week. Oh, God. Lots of speculation okay. on this. Lots of comments. Um, people saying, Mary Hodges said, the voice in the recording sounds like he is saying, my home, women fly, so fly. So that was one thing, like the women mm-hmm. fly. We did hear that part. Uh, someone named uh, Black Angel Demon on Instagram said that they heard, you won't get away with it. The woman always lies. Ooh. Which I didn't catch that part either. Here, let's play the audio again. This is the original one that Lupita first posted. It really sounds like flies to me. Uh, yeah. It really does. But I did hear something that sounded like you, will, you won't get away with it. Oh, really? Yeah. Like at the very beginning, the little it just trails off and it does sound like somebody won't get away with something. We'll post the audio again in the companion blog. So if you want to go and listen to it and try to figure it out yourself and scare the shit out of yourself. <laughs> listening over and over, over and, and over again. Over. Seriously, the more you listen to it, the more freaked out you get. But this is episode 11, season seven at hauntedaf.com in the blog. Uh, by the way, so we had, this came from August and they actually have a theory about EVPs. Obviously, not all, but some could be electronics picking up radio waves. Some people have gotten free radio with their dental work. Some hear it through the fan. Which, so, yeah, it's true. But It is true. But normally you don't hear a whispering voice on the radio. The tone of that voice yeah, is whispery. It very much so. So to me, it's either something that we can't identify or she's been hacked. Yeah. Okay, we got another UFO story, but first we didn't talk about the video from Stephanie's cruise ship. You okay. remember we just posted mm-hmm that one a couple of weeks ago. Yep. The coolest part about that story was actually the YouTube video link that mm-hmm. she sent to us. And the video was actually a cruise ship captain talking about something that she had seen uh, on a cruise ship. And she showed the video and it looked exactly like what Stephanie had posted. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't already go to episode eight, season seven, and watch that video, watch Stephanie's video, because it was really cool. But it also reminded me of this thing that's going on on my next door okay oh, this God. is my next door in my neighborhood and, but not you witnessing it right right no okay. it wasn't me so i saw this uh it's someone posted and i'm not using any names here so around 4 a.m to 7 a.m did anyone notice a hovering sort of aircraft roughly the size of a helicopter but obviously not one just chilling up in the sky almost looking like a huge star until getting closer no lights except there was one huge bright white one absolutely weird. And then they gave the cross streets Mm -hmm. of where it was, which is not far from my house. The crazy thing is that there were over a hundred responses about this. Oh, wow. Lots of them saying, yes, I saw the same thing. Somebody says, I saw three, but over the Dallas downtown area, just hovering. Someone else says, I heard it in our neighborhood. Again, giving the cross streets, it was a loud vibrating sound and it lasted a while. Another person says, I actually saw this too. I was taking my dog out at 4 a.m. and noticed something strange in the sky. I've been trying to figure it out. Uh, I'd like to note that I'm near UTD, which is several miles away from not my neighborhood, but yeah, it's that's close by to my house. where you live. Exactly. And uh, they say it sounds like it was the same thing. And then another person says it was out hovering again this morning. So loads of pictures and videos that people posted of this thing. And one guy even sent me a video.
thank you, uh, Robert Bakira, for sending that to us. Um, the problem is, is when you look at it, it's just it just looks like a dot in the sky. Right. Kind of like uh, Stephanie's uh, video from her cruise ship. It just right. looks like a dot in the sky. You don't get the full impact of it if you're not standing there listening and seeing the whole thing. So I know it's been in the news quite uh, for the last two weeks is that they've been doing like drone testing of deliveries. Right. And I was thinking maybe it's that, but yeah, well, these sound way bigger right. than a drone. Roughly the size of a helicopter. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. And somebody else did comment, uh, quote, DPD officially launched its drone surveillance program this year. Okay. Maybe they were lending them to Garland for a manhunt. But so there was a manhunt going on in Garland at this particular time. Right. So but again, I thought the drones were smaller than that. So did I. And one guy talked about how he was sitting on his front porch recently while a drone was up in his yard, like looking at him while he was looking at God, it. so freaky. Which is so freaky. But then I'm also wondering like, how do we know what's what anymore? That's a great question. When because yeah, of all this new technology that's coming out, like, are we just supposed to be cool with stuff flying in the sky now? And like, don't question it anymore. Right. And there was uh, another time someone in my neighborhood was commenting about how they saw drones coming down our alley yeah. at three o'clock in the morning. That is weird. Which is wrong on so many That is counts. not Google taking aerial photos of your oh, backyard. No. That is not. God, here she comes again. Watch <laughs> out. She's freaking out. There's a cat tail across It's because we got a storm coming. And that's that, why she's probably all stir crazy It's because now because we're talking about it, we have like eight drones in the yeah, front yard. Too. Yeah. They heard us. That's probably They're it. coming to get us, Julie. Uh, but if you guys have any stories or any feedback on this, please let us know. Hauntedafpodcast at gmail.com because I imagine if we're seeing a whole lot of this weird activity mm -hmm. in Dallas. I bet it's happening elsewhere. Sure. All right. So this next story comes from one of our patrons and one of our favorite people. This is Matt. Yay. Hey, this is Matt out of Sacramento, California. Back in 2012, I had lost my sister. Um, and that was rough because she was, she was only 24. It was a sudden and unexpected. This really hit, hit hard. And um, about four or five years after she had passed, Pull up to this container. I'm a garbage man, and uh, you got to pull it, wrangle it out of the uh, the enclosure. And it was a vehicle to my left, and I kind of blocked it in. So I got out real quick, looked over, and I saw what seemed to be a woman about 20 years old. For some reason, she was in the passenger seat, and I had just quickly noticed that there was nobody in the driver's seat. And um, as I pulled the container out, I turn again to look to make sure that you know that car wasn't backing up. And the lady got out. It was my sister. Literally everything about this woman was my sister. I don't know what it was. I got in the truck like, you know, I'm going to look back and that's not going to be, you know, my sister Rachel. So I, I dumped a container, put it down and I looked over and she just gave me like this quick little high kind of wave and smiling. And I'm like, what? what? That's my sister. And I started crying. I mean, imagine this big garbage truck pull up and a garbage guy, you know, dirty and doing his job. And I just started bawling. So I got out of the truck, pushed the container back in. You know, I tried to just not pay attention. And then I looked back over and there was nobody there. It was an empty car mm. with nobody in it. Mm. Unless she hid behind the car or there really wasn't any place she can dash off to. But absolutely gone. I even looked in the mirror in the back to make sure, you know, as I backed out of there, I wasn't running somebody over. But she was gone. There was nobody around there. And I don't know if that was a figment of my imagination, whatever it was. But that little wave and that little smile, that was absolutely my sister, kind of was like or her telling me that it's okay. I'm, I'm doing good. I'm keeping an eye on you. I hope you're okay. But it was it was actually reassuring. But yeah, it was it was quite something. So anyway, thank you guys for having an amazing podcast. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank like, you, bad. What I wouldn't give to have one of those moments. I know. You know, with one like one of my grandparents or with my aunt, something like that. I would I would really give anything to have that. <laughs> are you tangled now? <laughs> Headphones are all tied up in her legs. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've had moments of like thinking I see my mom in a yeah. car, but never anything that uh, that extreme, right. you know, but, oh, Matt, thank you so much for sharing yeah, that, that story. Yeah, that was amazing. So we've gotten some really awesome disembodied voice stories Oh, my lately. God, I love these so much, I do, too. too. Okay. They're so freaking creepy. Uh, this one comes from Heather. It was a few nights after I had had my hysterectomy, and I had to switch places in bed with my husband. That means I had to sleep on the side of the bed next to the open door, which I really don't like. 
I was sound asleep when my husband woke up and heard something. He couldn't figure out what he was hearing and thought he still might be asleep. So he pinched himself. It was a voice coming from my direction, but my mouth was not moving. My throat was not moving. As he was watching me, this thing got even louder, but it wasn't speaking a language he'd ever heard. Then he realized it wasn't coming from me. It was next to my head talking to me. Oh. Of course, he wanted to wake me up so I could hear this thing. So without thinking, he nudged me right where the incisions were. Oh. Oh. Of course, I immediately woke up to him saying, there's something next to you. I, in severe pain, said, well, it's not there now. <laughs> Perfect. Perfectly done. He realized what he had done and was very apologetic, but still completely freaked out by what had occurred. We have had a lot of unexplained things going on in this house, and when the weather warms up, I will be using saging to hopefully get rid of the negative things. Heather. Heather. Damn. When did this happen? Did I she know. Say when it I don't know. Why are you waiting just till summer to sage? Seriously. Do it now. Yeah, you would just crank up the heat if yes. it's that cold. So this next one comes from Angie. When we first moved into this apartment, I would hear footsteps in the attic. Mm. I told my mom, but she thought I was just freaking myself out. One day I'd just gotten home from school. I was in college at the time and I was laying on the bed when I heard something like a bag rustle and then the bed moved a little bit. Mm. I thought it was probably just my dog, so I didn't pay attention. My door cracked open though, and I saw my dog walking slowly towards it, which made my heart drop to my ass. <laughs> Yes. Wow. I whistled for him to come into the room, but he would not budge. I was confused and whistled again when out of nowhere, I heard a stern whisper, be careful. Huh? He might hear you. <laughs> I don't I like barely <laughs> move. I'm like, my heart just dropped to my ass. <laughs> but somehow I grabbed my dog and left so fast. I didn't even bother putting on my shoes. I stayed in my car until my mom got home from work that day. And again, that's from Angie. Angie, oh, tell yeah. us more. Dear Lord. I wonder if anything's happened since then. He might hear you. Who's he? I don't know. Who is what it? What do they do? Who are they holding hostage? Okay, we need more of these disembodied voice stories. Hauntedafpodcast <laughs> at gmail.com. These yeah, are amazing. That's so good. And please don't forget, we are posting movie reviews right now. Uh, it's called The Movie Minute, where we talk about new movies and streaming TV shows and stuff. It's fun. It's it a really so good podcast, guys. I promise. You can find that at juliesayso.com. And it looks like we're going to have free passes to that uh, Nicolas Cage movie, <gasps> The Unbearable yes. Way. Yes. Yes. It's so excited. I know. It, go to the website anyhow and just watch that trailer the because it looks fantastic. amazing. So guys, we only have two episodes left after this it's one. It's going by so fast. I know. It, it has really flown by and we were getting some kind of shitty comments. Of like, course. you know, wow. yeah, I've been that long. But the deal is, is we do three months on and three months off and we set it up that way because it's a lot of work and that gives us time to kind of cull through all the stories. Mm. And uh, also it gives us a chance to have our season finale on Halloween. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so April 28th is going to be the season seven finale. We have so much great stuff to catch up on. We're going to talk to JB and Stuart Finally. about their investigations. Yes. yes, we've been checking in with those guys. And uh, also, God, we still need to do an update on that Haunted Little Caesars that we talked about last oh, week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, super haunted place. We need to call them and see what's going on. Send us those emails. We know you've been meaning to because at the beginning of every single story mm -hmm. you guys always start it with, I've been meaning to send this forever. Right. So don't wait another minute. Please send those to hauntedafpodcast at gmail.com so we can use them in season seven of Haunted AF. <laughs> <laughs>